And he, the, by his stripes we are healed. It is only through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Who else could he be talking about in Isaiah chapter 53? Who else was pierced through for our iniquities? Who else in Isaiah 53? It wasn't Israel, right? Who else was pierced? I'm, I'm reading from Isaiah, the, the prophet, time. absolutely. Do you ever read? Do you read the Isaiah 53? Surely he himself carried our sorrows. We ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was pierced through for our transgressions. Maybe it's talking about me. Were you pierced? Because it says exegesis. He was, he's talking about an individual. He was pierced through for our transgressions. Who else? He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising of our peace fell upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Have you ever studied Isaiah 53? Who else could it be talking about? Look at the verses coming afterwards. Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Yeah, let's say it. Who has believed our report? You don't believe the report. And to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of parched ground. He had no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him. Who else could that be? That we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and forsaken of men. You see, let the word speak for itself. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. This is Isaiah 53. This is Isaiah 50. You know where Isaiah 53 is. That's, that's in the Bible, in the yeah, Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah. Yeah, but Who saying, else would he be talking I'm about? Paul just to no, we're not talking about Paul. We're talking Isaiah. That's See, you're in a conundrum, aren't you? You keep thinking I'm preaching from the New Testament, but here I am preaching from the Old Testament. Who, who else was pierced? What's that? And he will. He will. What piece in the verse say that is but first, the peace he brings is with God for our forgiveness of sins. Who else? The chastisement, the chastisement for our peace fell upon him. And by his wounds, what's that? Oh. They, then that is, not, that is not followers of Jesus Christ. I mean, if I dressed up like you did and I killed somebody, does that make me a Jew and does that make me a murderer? It would make me a murderer. Crusades were wicked against Christ, 100%. A hundred percent. The the things that people did in the name of Jesus Christ was wicked. Amen. Many but that was not Jesus Christ. And he is. So has he done that? Yeah, he is. Has he done that? Yeah, he is. No, of course no, he is. No, 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 of course he is. I have I talk to people from all different lands and different tongues and they are coming to know Jesus Christ. Gathering all the nations. Yeah, the absolutely. Them absolutely. Them so how let me ask you this. How are you how is your sin forgiven? God. What's that? But where's the blood sacrifice? I mean, you believe in the you believe in the Tanakh, you believe in the prophets, right? And it requires to be a blood sacrifice. Where, where does it say that? Where does it say that? What's that? Prayers instead of the sacrifice. Where does it say that? I mean, where, where, where? I mean, show me in the Bible where it says that that. That God has now taken Bible, away. You've got to listen to the, to the scholars. The scholars. Where does it say that? In the, in the Bible. Where? Uh, you guys don't even know the Bible. No. You don't know the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. Who else could it be? He was oppressed and afflicted. This is later. He did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to a slaughter, and all, and like a sheep, he was silent before his shears. Who else could that be? Uh, what's that? I am an elder. No, I mean the, the scholars of the generation. Yeah, where's that say? It says in the Bible. Where? Where? See, I'm, I'm showing you real scripture about a historical person, Jesus Christ, and you guys are just kind of vaguely talking around it. Who else could he be talking about in Isaiah 53? Me talking about anyone else that was. Who else was pierced for our transgression? Who else was crushed for our iniquities? For What's that? 
Who said it was for your transgression? Right here in Isaiah. It says it right here. But he was pierced through for our transgression. He was, he was Jesus Christ was innocent. I mean, Pontius Pilate, if you read historical document, it says that Pontius Pilate said that Jesus, I find no guilt in this man. What transgressions so, There were no transgressions. He said he was his own transgressions. He went against his own religion. No, or he fulfilled his religion. There is so much like 2 Samuel chapter 7, it talks about a, a the eternal throne of David and there will be a king that will sit on it forever. David died. Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. That fulfills that prophecy. No, and he rose again from the dead. There's a, a plenty of evidence of that. No, because of the eyewitnesses. Because of the eyewitnesses. So the, the New Testament, I mean, Luke who wrote, we're talking New Testament. Well, that's fine. No, it's obviously not. Actually, yeah, New Testament for the no, not at all. Not at all. So, okay, but let's stay with the Old Testament then. I've challenged you in the Bible. How you doing? I've challenged you in the Bible in Isaiah 53. Who else could die for our transgressions? Who possibly could have? But Jesus Christ. No, but who, who else? Who else was pierced to fit this description? But that you're copying out. I'm just, he's saying I'm talking about the New Testament. I'm talking out of, out of Isaiah 53. What? You have the, you have the original What's that? It doesn't matter. I have translations. Oh, you can't say that. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. We have translations. So, what's that? Yeah, I'll try to. My name is Norman. Yeah, read, read Isaiah 53. Study Isaiah 53. I'll find the verse for you where it says that'll be you fine. gotta speak, you gotta speak, uh, you okay. gotta listen to what the scholars of the mm -hmm. say. That means that the, the Talmud is basically the Word of God. Yep, but it's a tradition. Tradition, the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. What the, the elders may say right. about the Bible doesn't have the same status as the Bible. Well, it says right? it, it, it doesn't have the same status. Except for the Bible, you gotta listen to what they say. They were a lot smarter than me. I mean, the same um, thing. Well, I yes. Cover, and I might be able to send you Oh, sure. I, I could do that for you, if you want. <clears throat> yeah, Isaiah 53. I mean, we could talk about yeah, a lot more of the okay, scriptures. I, I've studied the original Hebrew. You know, so have I. So have I. Yeah, so have I. No, I'm Christian. You were born Jewish? Was that? You were born Jewish? No. No. So hey, are you guys familiar with the Hebrew Israelites that stand over there? They, they would say no. to you, they, they would say to you that you guys, I'm not saying this. That you guys are imposters, that they are true Israel. Have you run into them yet? I've run into them, not here, but a different place. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, they really believe that they are the, the true Israels. And if you were walking by, they would degrade you and put you down. It's amazing. You Tell me when you're ready. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? What's good about berating and putting people down? No, no. What, what's that? So what's good about berating and putting people down? It's huh? terrible. I totally disagree with them. I argue with them. No, I don't care about arguing. Yeah, but I argue with them because they call, walk by and they, they would call you Esau and call me Esau. You got red hair and you're hairy. That's what they would say. So, it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So them, sure. I don't, it hurts the continuation, but it's uh, complicated stuff, I mean. Right, we don't want to stand on prophecies right away until they come into fruition. And it has, that's my yeah, contention is that, and, and so Christians. And the scholars, mm -hmm. you have just the Bible, you yeah, have we also confused. have tradition about certain stuff. Like and not mm -hmm. only that, I'm telling you but that I, that I, I as a Christian, I'm a Reformed Christian, which says sola scriptura. I only go by what the scripture like says. I, I'm not like that, a Catholic. Yeah, no, well, that, the thing, well, that's, the thing. that's, um, that's in not. In the original Torah scrolls, right? Mm -hmm. There aren't, there's, there's a thing called vowels. Mm -hmm. vowels I'm familiar with vowels. Vowels aren't written down. I'm very clear. Vowels change the word. I understand that. I understand Hebrew. You follow the thing that isn't written down, but it's passed by tradition. I don't. You don't follow, you don't follow the vowels, and how do you translate the word? What's that? No, I follow what the scripture says, and I do believe we have. I do believe that we have translations that are valid translations today, for sure. What makes it valid? What's that? What makes it valid? Because we can do a forensic study and look back at the original language. Obviously, we can translate many things into different languages. No. But what's your argument? Your argument that. 
is that we follow tradition. Okay, all right. So you don't follow the Bible? Follow tradition? No, I said the Bible itself is not complete without tradition. But this is the same thing as Catholics. The Catholics hold the Apocrypha and tradition. And so what happens is they see the Bible through this lens of tradition and uh, the magisterium. And so that it ends up distorting right, what the Bible what says. What's that? Why would you say that? Because the vowels of the word change the meaning of the word and it's not written down in the original word. I don't, I think that translation is a valid way of communicating something. No, but you cannot have translation unless you, unless you already know the tradition of what vowels were on the on each word. Okay, so there's scholars that have given us reliable translations. Why are they considered reliable? Because we could do a forensic study and Again, so that. What's that? Came because we could go back to the documents. I mean, we have we have far the more documents. Now we're decided, so now you're <coughs> documents from the times the second temple. Okay. And that was what, what, what what are the names of your traditional um, documents? Would you say? Well, most of them were originally they were they were said word by word. They weren't written down, but after a lot of them were written down. Okay, so it was an oral tradition. So you have no way of knowing whether the oral tradition was faithfully. Well, there came a big rabbi in the second temple and wrote everything down. You have to know exactly by heart and also what's considered a rabbi. And that was the Mishnah. Yeah. Okay. And the time the second temple. All right, it's good talking with you all, and I'll be glad to talk with you again. Stay Isaiah 53, brothers. All right. Take care.